So welcome. I'm now going to share my screen so you can actually see my PowerPoint. And actually, that's my test site. And now I'm on MathML. And then I'm just going to do a quick check. Uh, all right. So let me know, were you able to see the PowerPoint? Yeah. OK, great. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of, I'm just going to give a general description of what MathML is, some specs, how to do a workflow, and then hopefully we'll, and my plan is to go into a demo, so seeing it in action is probably more helpful than anything. So again, welcome. This is a great way to end Accessibility Awareness Month, and I know this is something that's been uh, something we've been needing to solve, and I think we're getting there. We may not be there yet. At first, I really want to acknowledge the other people who really helped out. A lot of people on campus have helped out with various questions and debugging and uh, technical advice and things like that. So in alphabetical order, Jennifer Babb, uh, Mike Brooks, a lot of his advice I'm going to be sharing with you, Stevie Rocco, Alexa, I know I've had a to chat with her on some of her challenges. Stan Smith, I don't think he's here today, but he's also done a lot of experimentation, particularly with Angel. Sonia Woods, who also figured some things out. Kristen Fitton Johansson, who fights the good fight. And also people from Sites and Angel Support who answer my math mail questions. And particularly Sites, because they just got in an upgrade of the MathDAX plugin that lets you put in MathML, so that's super exciting. <clears throat> So here is in the commonly used equation, uh, and this is a challenge to render, regardless of uh, accessibility, it is a challenge to render as text because as you can see, you've got uh, layout issues, you've got this fraction, and you have to know that this, these two numbers, the one and the n are in a fraction, and then there's the summation, and then you have to know the thing in the parentheses goes with the summation, and all of that goes under a square root and sigma. So some of you who have taken statistics may recognize this as the standard deviation equa equation for a population. It's uh, messy enough that it makes a great example for what we're trying to do, but also common enough that it's going to be encountered in a lot of courses. So I thought I'd use that one. Well, why does MathML matter? It is a markup language that allows you to, this actually can be rendered as text. Um, so in theory, you can have quick edits. Um, even if you're sighted, you can have this in text. That means you could zoom out in your browser and not get a raster-sized equation. Um, if you're passing documents back and forth, uh, in math, it's a standard that will preserve information. So in other words, it has semantic structure. And that's particularly important for screen readers because they could go to the part of the equation that they need to kind of figure out. So for example, they may know there's a square root and they may know there's a summation, but they kind of need a review of what is in the summation part. And so then they can just navigate to this part, x to the i minus mu squared. Uh, the, also, the nice thing about MathML is a proper MathML engine for a screen reader will be able to parse this out better than an alt tag would. And it is a standard. It's been blessed by the W3C. That they have the host of the standard. Um, MathJax also works with the standard, and MathJax is a JavaScript library that's been created by AMS, which is the American Mathematical Society, and SIAM, which is another one. Um, MIT has been working with it. A lot of, uh, of AMS, the American Physics Society, Chemical Society, and IEE, which is an engineering society, have all been working to develop um, tools including a uh, freeware font called Stick, Apple, Wolfram who makes Mathematica, MathWorks who makes MATLAB, Design Science who makes math type equation editors, and the plugin have all been working with it. Elsevier and AIP have been contributing to it too. So 
there's been a lot of work. <clears throat> like there's been a lot of work for I'm going to guess about 20 years. Uh, we're just starting to get somewhere where you can implement it across many things. I just uh, I want to remind that if you have a mute button, you might want to use it for this part. I'm hearing some keyboard typing, and it might be distracting to others. And it's also going to be on the recording. So. All right, thanks. I'm still hearing something, but we'll figure it out. So what is MathML? It is specifically an XML, so <clears throat> those of you who know HTML, HTML is short for Hypertext to Markup Language. XML is basically is a technology where you can just sort of mark up anything, including mathematical equations. Uh, there's a ChemL for chemical equations. There are RSS was originally an XML, it still is an XML format. And here's an example of it, so E equals MC squared. So you have these beginning and closing, opening and closing math tags, so again, if you know HTML, this will look very familiar. Math, end math with the slash down here. Um, Display equals block. If you have that in a MathML equation, you're going to end up with a centered equation in its own block by default. If you remove it, you can embed it in a sentence. Okay. This thing, XMLN, XMLNS equals HTTP blah, 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 slash MFML. So that is a URL goes to a location in the W3C. Yeah, I, I'm still hearing some shuffling of papers. So I think everyone else is too. So if, if you could just kind of mute your phones or something like that. Okay, <laughs> thanks. So it goes to the w3.org. This is MathML 2.0 from 1998. That's still the best supported standard. There is a MathML 3.0 in the works that they're working on now, but I don't think many technologies have gone to it yet, so we're sticking with two. This link, XMLNS, means XML namespace. It's important to include for compatibility across multiple browsers, particularly IE. If you don't have that link in your math code, IE just sort of says, I don't know what to do with this and kind of chokes. So you need to keep this in your code. And then as you can see, you have one row of an equation and you have this E. MO is an operator and then an M and then a superscript. So the C is the base and the two is the superscript. So. It's kind of a little where to work for a little E equals MC square, but again, all of this structure facilitates screen reader um, parsing and other important aspects. So some critical MathML jargon, the namespace version. So if you have an option for namespace, you usually want to choose it, and again, that's that XML and S link. Which version? Version 2.0. You may also hear the term MM space, and that's something you want to avoid. This was an older variant developed by Microsoft for Internet Explorer, and it was basically, it's MathML, but every tag is prefixed by an M colon. And the only reason to use it is if you have a student who for some reason just doesn't have a recent enough version of JAWS. I'm thinking that's going to go away because uh, I've been able to render true MathML in JAWS since about three years ago, if not more. So I think a lot of times the students will be updated. So I think this will become less and less of a need. But just for kicks, I did want to show you what it looked like in case you ever saw that code and wondering what was going on. Um, if you see it, you need to find a way to get rid of all the M colons. 
it shouldn't be too hard to do with a search and replace. Okay, the other two math jargony things. One is MathJax. This is an open source JavaScript library. It was co-developed by the AMS, American Mathematical Society. And it facilitates rendering of MathML and, I have to say, LaTeX across browsers. So, in fact, there are some browsers, particularly Firefox, Opera, Safari, that support MathML natively. Internet Explorer 9 with Math Player 3 will support it. But Chrome, just for some reason, Google said, we're, we're not going to try and deal with it. We're just going to rely on MathJax. So if you want MathML to just play properly on Google Chrome, you have to use MathJax. So unfortunately, it doesn't interfere with anyone else. So most people are using MathJax. <clears throat> and then Math Player is the plugin for IE. It's the one that allows JAWS, which is the most common screen reader still on the market, to parse MathML. So you need Math Player is developed by Design Science, who also created MathType. Um, and you need version 3. And then you need IE9, but many people are probably on IE10 or 11. Don't worry, you can downshift to IE9. You just have to reboot your computer a few times and deactivate it and go down your way. So we do have documentation on how to do that. You just It does take time. The good news is I have done it, and I even did it on a Mac running VirtualBox, and uh, it can be done. So it's one of the great hassles, though. The other question you may be thinking is, uh, how do I create MathML? Well, you don't have to hand code it. You can usually use an equation editor, or if you or your instructors that you work with are using LaTeX, which is another MathML math markup language, it's fairly easy to convert uh, LaTeX to math. So, for the record, LaTeX is a actually it's not just a math markup language; it's a, just a general markup language for documents. So a lot of publications in the math field are done in LaTeX. And as you can see, it's a little bit simpler than MathML. E equals MC squared is just E equals MC caret 2. And E to the I pi minus 1 is E caret. And then curly brackets, I over pi. I backslash pi, excuse me. And equals negative 1. So <clears throat> there are a lot of faculty who have invested time in learning LaTeX, they don't have to get rid of it, but they do, for the sake of accessibility, they might need to learn to take an extra step to convert it to MathML. Um, and why are we so concerned about that? So you may know of, uh, heard that LaTeX and MathJax will work together, and there is some accessibility, and that is true. It's just a limited accessibility. So if you're using LaTeX with MathJax, you have to be on Internet Explorer 9 with the Math Player 3 in JAWS. However, people are no longer just on JAWS. So I know World Campus had a student who was using VoiceOver, which is available on the Mac or iPhone. And so they needed to use MathML in conjunction with MathJax. So um, you don't need to get rid of your LaTeX. If you have a huge LaTeX library, keep it. It converts very easily to MathML. So <clears throat> basically, what I'm going to preview as a demo is, um, so if you are working a lot with STEM courses, you can store your equations either in LaTeX or an equation editor. So it, um, an equation editor would probably be the most common one is MathType, which there's a version for Mac and there's a version for Windows. There's one little quirky bug in the uh, Mac version um, that I know Alexa has run to, but for everyday purposes, the Mac version usually does a fine job. There are also equation editors for either Mac or either Windows, and there are some online tools, um, and FTIY uh, being one of them. And there are online conversion tools for LaTeX 
to MathML. So there are lots of options in there. I'm going to be focusing mostly on math type because it has it's reasonably inexpensive. I believe a lot of faculty may already be using it for one reason or another. So it's actually, I would say, a good investment. It has a lot of applications, including cutting and pasting into PowerPoint as well as on the web. Uh, there is, in recent versions of Microsoft Office, there is an equation editor, but that one does no longer does MathML. The equation editor a few years ago back in Microsoft used to be related to MathType, but I think they, those two companies have sort of gotten a divorce, so the native Microsoft equation editor works visually, but it can't export to MathML. So again, I recommend using MathType, which can Im create an equation you can import into Office or um, I Office for the Mac and other things. So. And I already mentioned math display equals block. I'll talk about that later. That parameter causes math to be centered, and you have to remove it if you need to embed it in a sentence. All right, the next thing is I'm going to show you how to create MathML, and then I'm going to show you how to create a link to MathJax. And basically, it's a link to a script library. You can include it in Angel and in another, in an HTML page and other contexts. Um, in other situations such as sites, there's a plugin or your um, LMS or CMS administrator may have to enable something. I do know that shops such as EMS, for instance, the Dutton Institute is using Drupal with a LaTeX um, plugin for Drupal, so it's out there. And what link am I talking about for MathJack? So, <clears throat> so this script link basically says, hello, I want to link out and use MathJax. And so to get into specifics, there are two sites. Depends on if you're an open site, HTTP, or password that's supposed to be protected, not prorected, but protected, HTTPS. And basically it's going to the same location but two different protocols. So it's going to HTTP, and then it's going to cdn.mathdocs.org, the latest version, and then the configuration that they give you is tech or AMS, MML, which is LaTeX, or MML, which is MathML. So basically, if you have that configuration, you can insert either MathML or LaTeX if that's what happens, and you'll get a decent visual display. Screen reader-wise, there will be differences. This password protected one was um, implemented for places like Angel where if you run Angel in Firefox, um, you keep getting security messages and blocks because Firefox won't let you go from a protected site out to an unprotected site. So this says, oh, no, it's still protected, <laughs> but pretty much it's going to the same place. And if you want more information, docs, uh, there's a link to MathJax, uh, docs.mathjax.org. Um, if you're a server administrator, you can download a version of MathJax and install it on your own server. That might improve performance a little bit, but um, linking out is fine too. And lastly, before I get into the demo, I want to talk about browser support. So my favorite browser for MathML is Firefox 3 Plus, which I'm pretty sure everyone is on now if they're on Firefox. Basically, you can just put MathML in there, namespace, no namespace, um, display equals block, whatever. You can style it. It's happy. It does what you want it to do. Safari, um, it's generally been quirky. The Probably the further along your version of Safari is, the better it is, but you may have to update to your OS, so there are some trade-offs there. As I said, with Internet Explorer, for some reason, when Microsoft went to 10 and 11, they removed whatever it is that made Math Player work, so now you have to be on Internet Explorer 9. Um, 
I'm not sure you're losing much functionality, to be honest. But there you go. Google Chrome just does not like math. Math ML, you have to have Math Jacks if you want anything displaying. Um, iOS Safari, it's a little quirky with Math Jacks, a little better without, but again, I haven't tested in iOS 8. I probably will today. I just upgraded, so. There you go. I'm going to escape and see if there are any questions, and there are. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Nope. No questions yet. Are there any questions before I head on to the demo? I probably blasted you with a lot of information. Okay, so probably the critical part is going to be the demo. So the first part of the demo, I'm actually going to go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. I'm going to go to this page. So the first thing I'm going to do is recreate this in the equation editor. And I'm going to do this to show that even though it looks fairly complicated, it isn't really. And I suspect, like I said, I think mo a lot of math instructors may be familiar with something like this um, from doing publications. If not, they're probably familiar with LaTeX, and I'll show you how to do a conversion that's ridiculously simple. All right, so I'm going to build this lovely equation. The key to, is to kind of understand the structure of the equation. All right. So you have, I'm going to do the right, the left side of the equal sign first. It is, in this case, it's a sigma. Let me see if I can shrink this. Okay. So there are all these palettes that let you build templates. So right now I want a Greek letter, so um, I have learned that the lowercase Greek letters are up in this little palette, so I want a sigma. Uh, here are some other sing symbols. These are subset symbols, logic symbols, arrows, different types of operators, more operators. These are the upper the upper case Greek letters. So there are lots of symbol choices. Uh, if for some reason yours isn't covered, you are really in an advanced math class, but there are mechanisms to get them in there anyway through Unicode. All right, so the next thing is I've inserted my sigma. What to do with this right side of the equation? Well, the whole thing's under a square root. So I'm going to look for the square root template. Here is the square root template. As you can see, there are fraction templates here. Um, if it's not a square root, but like the cube root, there's a root template. And then little <coughs> boxes are where you can put stuff into them. So let me put that one in here. And you can see there are different types of brackets. This is where you do your superscripts and subscripts, uh, summations different types of integrals. Uh, this is where you can add characters above or below characters like the hat character or the line character. More arrows that you can label. Uh, these are the products and I don't know what the U is. This is the matrix one. And I don't know them all, I just know what they look like. All right, so now I have a square root going. I need a fraction it's now because the first term is 1 over n. I'm going to put in a fraction. This is where you start embedding stuff and stuff. And, okay, and now I need a summation. And I want pretty much a summation with all the boxes possible, which is this one. Okay. And, and okay, i uh, equals 1. So something has not happened right. There we go. Sometimes you need to do it adjusting to make sure that this you're getting the square root symbol. Okay. The next term is in these curly parentheses. I'm going to put those in there. X minus 
and I need another lowercase Greek letter, in this case, mu. Okay. All of this is squared. I'm going to highlight. All right. Let me do this one first. Actually, I just realized that one's not right. I equals 1. Okay. I need a superscript. I. Okay. And then I need a superscript. That was a subscript. Now I need a superscript. 2. So... I'm not a math whiz. I have used this before, but um, it's not terrible. And probably the more you understand what you're trying to put in, the easier it will be. Okay. So I have the equation bill. Now I need to figure out how to get it out into MathML. So in math type, if you want to export, this is a little quirky, but we did document it. You want to look into your cop cut and copy preferences. And you want to make sure you have options such as image, or you can even do equations for other applications. But for now, I'm just going to recommend MathML. And I selected MathML 2.0. They don't even give you three with namespace attribute. That's usually the one you want. Now, for some reason, again, you needed the M namespace because just a student needed that for compatibility purposes. You can just toggle that, and then the next time you do an export, you'll get M namespace, and then you can go back to just the namespace version. Or, for, you know, you're doing a paper for, um, and it requires you to do LaTeX, you can toggle to LaTeX. Um, or you can keep your LaTeX separate, however you choose to do that. And as you can see, you can also start to PDF, but we don't recommend that. All right. So I've set that preference. I'm now set to export to MathML 2.0. Well, what is the export process? <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to copy it. And actually, it's probably not the one I want. All right, this is my backup copy, but I'm just going to open up a blank file. I paste it. <laughs> so... It's just a copy and paste. And there's my MathML. I, I generally recommend I have to either get rid of or fix the display equals block to single from single quotes to double quotes. And there's the XML namespace. That is done. So we're actually ready to go. This is ready to be inserted into um, Angel. It's ready to be inserted into HTML, which is what we're going to do next. And I'm also going to just do just a reminder that you can insert this into PowerPoint. So right. I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to do insert into MathML, so I'm going to open up a new slide. It's a little quirky. So when I brought MathType um, and had it installed, it gave me this extra tool um, menu. So I would insert an equation, and it's actually going to open up the equation editor. You can just cut and paste, and then, yep, don't want to do that. Actually, I'll save this. Okay. And it inserted it for me, and I often, it's teeny weeny, so I often usually expand the box. There we go. So if you expand the box, it gets a lot bigger. So that's how you can do that. It also works with words, so 
feel like a salesman from that type, but they actually did do a pretty good job. All right, so you can save this. Believe it or not, you're going to save this as a PDF file, but don't worry if you open it up in math type, you'll still get the math ML you need. So, uh, PDF. Um, you can change it to PICS, but um, I think I just save it as PDF. So if I need to open it up again. All right, so now I have this MathML code. Right. Actually, I'm going to take this back. I did want to show before, I wanted to show a LaTeX conversion. So this is LaTeX for this for the similar equation I just did. So I, I got this off the web. So I'm going to open up my math type again. I'm going to open up a new file. All right, so I selected this um, LaTeX formula, and voila, there it is. So once I save that, I can export that to MathML pretty quickly or an image or whatever else I need to do. So that's why... You don't need to get rid of your law tech. You're just going through an extra step. Okay. So I'm going to create this HTML. I'm just going to open up Dreamweaver. MathML and HTML5 tend to play the best together, but if for some reason you need to use another version, you might have to test. Okay, we're done. I don't need... All right. So I'm in, so HTML5 just means doc type is HTML. Yeah, I think I just heard someone crumbling someone. <laughs> okay. I know, I feel like the phone police sometimes. All right, so here is, all right, there are two parts you want to, actually, I'm just going to do this first. The so first, I'm going to, Go from the math tag to the closing math tag, copy, and I can do Dreamweaver. You can also do this in BB Edit. And then I might want to add an H1 and there. demo. So, as you can see, Dreamweaver and probably a lot, most of the WYSIWYG um, engines won't support this very well, but it's actually in there. So now, if I preview this in Firefox, I know it's working because, voila, there it is. And in fact, I can also, um, something right to mention is you can apply CSS to uh, MathML. So if I put in, and I often do that to make it a little bit bigger. When you have Math Jacks in the mix, um, I usually bump it up to 1.25 M's. And one way to do it is an inline style, as you can see. Uh, that's what I did earlier, font size 1.5 M. But, uh, or 1.25 also works with MathJax. Uh, MathJax and CSS get a little quirky, and then when you put it in sites, it gets even quirkier still. So I'll, I'll go back to that slide when we get to sites, but I do like to bump up the default of the equation because otherwise I'm just going to get rid of this or just change it to 1M. That, that's you know reasonably legible in my opinion. That's starting to get a little tiny, so I, that's why I talk about bumping it up. But 
if I then try and open this up in Chrome, which is hopefully will be cooperative today for this part. If you get this sad unformatted equation, so make sure you test everything in Chrome <laughs> before you if that if you want Chrome support. So then now I have to add the MathJack support. Uh, so I'm going to go back to this, and this is the script link for that MathJack library, and this is a open site for now, so I can just use the one with HTTP, and you put it in the head of the file. And then, so if I go back, so I have this sad looking thing. Oh, it should be working now. Okay. Ta-da! So now it's working in uh, Chrome. And I can also tell that MathJax is enabled because if I right click on this, um, I get this MathJax menu. And in fact, it's very handy. It'll let you take someone else's MathML code for you, so or your colleague's MathML code. Um, I'm not sure what the language is. It might this might be for a screen reader interface, but and as you can see, if I hit the zoom key, it just keeps zooming away and it keeps its um, uh, crispness in the images. So that's the other advantage of it. You could do this with SVG also, but um, SVG isn't necessarily accessible to the screen reader at the moment. So that's a basic how-to just for HTML, which you may or may not be doing. All right, the next demo I want to do is Angel. So I'm going to go to Angel. And okay, in fact, I was. So here I am in Angel. I'm going to go into my test course. As you can see, our, uh, my MathML test folder. As you can see, I've done this a few times, so let's do this again. So add content. Um, it could be a page. It could be a survey. Actually, let me do a quiz, and let's see what happens here, or an assessment. Uh, is MathML working? So let's do true or let's do true false. Correct formula or keeping in mind I know there are two forms. Uh okay. Okay, recently in Angel, they added this HTML editor, so now you can do this. And you may, I may be even adding an extra step, but in any case, you want to make sure you're doing source code view before you do anything. And so in Angel, first you need to copy this script link. You only have to do it once per page, although if you're using question banks in a quiz, you may have to do it for every question because you may be pulling it in. Okay. This is the correct formula for SD. And now I just pull this in in all its glory. And 
than the Dreamweaver. And then if you have a multiple choice question, you can do the same thing for each answer. Save. Um, again, this may not look like much right now, but let's see what happens if we preview it. So there it is. If you wanted to embed this in a sentence, again, you would get rid of that display equals block and go on from there. And I think it kept the map embedded MathML expansion thing. So that's pretty much how you do it. I'm going to be honest and admit editing isn't fun, so you might, again, want to keep your equations stored safely somewhere, either in a uh, in your equation editor or a text file or something. <clears throat> and this, uh, as far as I know, has worked. I've gotten it to work in a page, and I now got it to work in a quiz. So uh, that's that's very helpful. And Stan Smith kind of was the pioneer of this, although he does it with LaTeX. All right. So the last demo I want to do because it's um, one is sites at Penn State. So sites at Penn State, they, they really have improved their math and math support. As you can see, I already have it. So I'm, what I'm going to do is, first of all, there are a few steps you need to do for any site who's doing this. Uh, okay. <clears throat> you can actually see there's the math ML in there. All right, the first thing you need to do is make sure the plugin is enabled. So I'm going to open up the plugins page in a new tab. So you need, you don't have MathML support out of the box. So what you need to do is scroll down to this, this MathJax LaTeX plugin. You need to activate it. Right, mine is activated already, so I'm not going to deactivate it. If you've been using this plugin, and you activated it before October this month, you may want to deactivate it and reactivate it because they just upgraded to a new version of the plugin on the central server. And until they had upgraded that, you couldn't put in MathML at all. It would just strip the code. So if you're running into that problem, you might want to reactivate your plugin. And you also want to do this in the settings. And you want to make sure that you enable tech, HTML, or MathML. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to process correctly. And then there are some other things that are more connected to uh, LaTeX. The other one is this force load. If your your entire site is using MathJax, you might just want to go ahead and click, and then all you have to do is cut and paste MathML. So as you can see, once you've done that, I do recommend, so here's the MathML I put in, and there's this opening square MathJax tag, then I put in the MathML, and then I repeat the MathJax tag. That will ensure optimal operation. I haven't always been using the MathJax tag and it's been working, but you never know. So this is the safest method. And then the other thing I want to talk about is if you're interested, again, in the edit CSS. First of all, um, open like a new tab. Okay, that's not what I wanted. This is a, a, a little advanced, but or I thought I'd worth going over. So CSS Insights is there's another plugin you have to enable, namely Step Pack. So let me go back in here. So if you need to edit your CSS for a website, you need to enable Jetpack. 
And in order to enable Jetpack, you have to have a WordPress.com account. You don't need to have actually have any blogs on there, but you do need to have an account that you can say, yes, I authorize Jetpack for this website at Penn State. After that, then you get a number of features, including being able to edit your CSS. So here's my CSS that I have edited. And I wanted to show this. You can't, because Matt Jax is doing, that plugin is doing stuff to transform the code, it actually has imported its own CSS. So you kind of have to figure out what the custom code, custom classes are, and I've been doing that with either Firebug or just inspect the inspect tool in the different browsers. And you get things like math dash underscore display, that controls how the entire thing is displayed. So this is the class you would need to modify. And as you can see, I've made it blue. And I have made the font size 1.25M. So let me just blow that up. And so again, you can do that. And you can also apply styles to parts of your MathML. So that was the last slide I wanted to talk about. CSS, so if you didn't weren't using MathJax, you could just say, well, anything that's a math tag, I just want to have it expand a little bit. And there are all these other tags, like if it's a fraction, I want to color code that or do something with it or put a border around it. Again, with the math jacks, it gets a little quirky. So I one technically to use embedded styles. Another is to add a custom class, which is sort of what the math jacks plugin did on sites. So if you're using sites, you need to figure out what those plugins are, those custom CSS slides that they've done through the plugin and modify those. So I'm at the end of the demo. So except for, I'm going to now go back to questions. The only thing I've not demoed is how to downgrade your IE from 9 to 10. OK, so is the process the same if we're using Drupal? It might be similar. I don't know what the plugins. What I would recommend is either contacting Dutton directly or putting a question on the Drupal Yammer group and seeing how they're doing it. It could also just be that they're hand coding a template that links out to the MathJax library. Can we put this script? Oh, okay. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, I do want to mention. I think one thing someone mentioned when with the Drupal implementation is if your Drupal site forces you to use a WYSIWYG editor, you need to make sure the WYSIWYG editor lets you go into source code and doesn't mess with your math ML code uh, sites. Um, for those of you who work sites, sites is set up to be strip out certain things. So as I said, before this month, it was stripping out MathML, and they fixed it so it doesn't do that anymore. Okay, great. Thanks. So MathML and MathJax work on IE9. It's got to be that one version, and you need MathLayer. Yes, that is correct. And actually, I will show So we're actually migrating the accessibility site to WordPress. So you can sort of get a little bit of a preview of that. So we have a math jacks 
So this page, which is also the last slide of the PowerPoint, and I will also cut and paste in the chat room, kind of goes through everything I talked about, but actually in detail and sample code. And then one of the pages in here is how to get down to IE9 and keep it that way. So this goes through the entire process of checking which version you have, disabling the current version, then removing it, seeing if you have, if you're, so I had to go through disable 11, remove it, then disable 10, but I didn't even know I had 10, but I did, so I had to disable it and remove it. <laughs> and then I finally, you can download Internet Explorer 9. Microsoft really, really doesn't want you to do that, but you can. And then, so once you disable everything, then you need to kind of make sure your upgrades don't automatically go push you back up to Internet Explorer 10. And then you can download an, uh, Map Player 3. Easy. <laughs> but I, I was, like I said, I was able to do it, and I was able, even able to do it on VirtualBox or Math, so it is doable. It's just a major pain in the butt. So I'm going to go... So screen readers, the display.block is an attribute that if you have it, it's going to make the equation be centered. And sometimes that's a good thing. If you need to embed it in a sentence like let, you know, for the equation E equals MC squared, what is C, or something like that, then you need to remove display equals block. Uh, there may be some other technical reason for it. Do screen readers read MathML well? Uh, it depends. JAWS and IE9 and Math Player 3 do a reasonably good job. I believe VoiceThread, particularly on the iPhone, does a decent job also. Uh, I, once you get beyond a few configurations, it's not so good. They're still, still neat working on that, unfortunately. Let's see, were there any questions on next? So, in fact, um, speaking of iOS, iBooks supports MathML. So if you insert an equation for an iBook that you put in iTunes, it's likely to be in MathML. Okay, were there any other questions? Okay, so like I said, I can't guarantee that I've covered 100% of the situation. So if you do have questions, you know, please go to Accessibility Web um, at psu.edu. And we can also, if you want someone to do a screen reader check on that something, or you want to look for uh, the website I did give you has some MathML test pages if you just want to test that also. So MathJax is that is the script. Uh, let me get rid of that one. Don't save. So this script link here is the link to Math and MathJax. If you're when in doubt, use https colon slash slash cdn dot mathjax dot org slash mathjax slash latest slash mathjax dot js question mark config equal tech dash ams dash mml underscore html or ml. Uh, we do we do have that on the website. So that implements MathJax. To implement MathPlayer, let me see if I can go to the website. So the website is here. So web, MathPlayer is a plugin just for IE9. 
that you can get from Design Science, and as you can see, they also sell math type. So you can learn all about math type there also. So basically, <clears throat> um, math jacks have to be enabled by the webmaster. Math player has to be installed by the user. So if you have a student needing a combination, someone might have to work with that student to make sure they have the right version of IE9 and math player. If you're a sighted student, math player isn't critical because you can use Firefox or Chrome. But if you're on JAWS, you have to get the Math Player 3 and have IE9. Many terms floating around. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Any other any other questions when they go to the order? Anything that um anything else I stepped on I know I kind of plowed through that. Oh, ChemML. <laughs> I think that's going to be our next challenge. I'm not aware of any plugins for JAWS and ChemML. The best, if you can use, well, I'm going to say the next best, there are situations where MathML doesn't quite work for whatever reason. And there are ways to get JAWS to read n certain technical equations it doesn't normally read. But ChemML is like a, just a different thing, and I think they probably need to do the same kind of building of players and things like that. Or right now you might need to do um, some images or linear descriptions as appropriate. Wish I had better news on that. I don't know much about ChemDraw. It might, but you'd have to check the export options. Um, I know Alexa has worked on exporting Word, and I think math type and some other tools. So I would say send that to Accessibility Web, and uh, we can make sure we put you in touch with Alexa. But there are a few tools, and I think including math type. But you might, they might need some finessing. So you have equations, well, that have a lot of text such as subscript words, etc. And again, I can put you all in touch with Alexa. I have to say, I did work on a STEM course a while ago. I think once I got into the rhythm of it, I just put them all in math and mal, into math type and just that was the end of it. And also, it let me do variations. Texa. I have to look that one up. I know that there are different MathML isn't the only math markup language out there. So you might be able if it's open math, you might be able to convert that into MathML. And I think MTEX is sort of it I'll have to look that one up. I don't think I don't know how much 
like like a lot of conversions, sometimes it's just there's no clean way to do it, unfortunately. But I'll just look up in text real quick. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Basically, it is math ML, but it basically is like, um, it's arbitrary, so <laughs> it doesn't really give you the same kind of structure that true math ML would. It can be used perhaps for a sentence, ideally, included in a particular equation, like this title here. But, yeah, if you're using it for an actual equation, you're kind of stuck. Okay, yes, that sounds great, thanks. And again, if for those of you who are working with faculty, if they have it in LaTeX, ask for it in LaTeX, because the conversion is pretty quick. No, 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 you don't have to shut up. <laughs> So any anything else? I, I will be here for a few more minutes. Well, I do appreciate it. I'm going to end the recording. <laughs>